Thank you, uh, Senator Rosen. Uh, Senator Hawley, you are recognized for your questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bont, for being here. I, I think you mentioned this in your, your written testimony, but I'd just like to start here. What, what percentage approximately of all fuel on the east coast of the United States is transported by your company's pipeline? Thank you for that question, Senator. It's approximately 45 percent. And how many gallons of fuel does your company's pipeline transport on a daily basis? Normally, on a, we would move approximately 100 million gallons of fuel a day, Senator. Yeah, that's a lot. Is, is it fair to say that tens of millions of Americans don't really have any choice but to rely on your, your pipeline for fuel? I mean, you have enormous market power is what I'm driving at. Is that a fair statement? Senator, over time, we've evolved as, as, a, as a big player in the fuel business, and it's because of our, our, our reliability record. And quite frankly, we're the cheapest cost of transportation for the fuel to those customers. Yeah. I, I think your pipeline, I think that the amount of fuel running through the pipeline exceeds the fuel consumption of Germany. And if I'm not mistaken, the closure of your pipeline facilitated – uh, nearly or, or, or led to nearly 16,000 gas stations without fuel across the country, which is huge. I mean, you're, you're huge, and consumers really rely on you, is my point. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious as to given this, given your market power, given the, the reliance of consumers, given the, the, the sheer number of consumers you serve, uh, why didn't you take up the Transportation Security Administration's offer to do a comprehensive cybersecurity review of the pipeline? Senator, thank you for asking that question. We indeed were in contact with them about setting that up. Obviously, COVID got in the way in the early days of that. Uh, we were getting ready to move at the end of the year into a new facility. So I think the conversation was that we want to do it. The VADAR program is a good program, uh, but we will schedule that later on. We do have that scheduled at the end of July. So it was a COVID issue, basically, or, or it was a moving issue. You're moving to a new headquarters. I'm looking at the Washington Post article here that that reports that uh, the TSA had, had tried to schedule a voluntary in-depth cybersecurity review, but that uh, the Colonial just, just couldn't get it done. I mean, do you regret not doing that in retrospect? Uh, Senator, anything that you could do is always helpful. If we look at that test, it's a, it's a great test, but it's not dissimilar to a lot of the, the tests that we already do in our system. Again, we have a good working relationship with TSA. A little surprised by the statement that I heard about refusal, actually investigated it on my end from my CIO and, and their contacts on TSA side. No one really understood why the word refuse was used. Mm. So just let me understand your last statement. Are you saying you think that the, the TSA review would have been redundant, not particularly helpful? You said it's, it's duplicative of, of things you do on your own end internally. Senator, I think in this case it probably wanted would not have resulted in finding that legacy VPN. Again, they don't actually go into the system. It's a questionnaire format type thing. I'm not saying it wouldn't be valuable. Mm -hmm. it, it very much could be. I think each one of these tests are slightly different. So if there's just that one little piece that can make the difference in seeing something, that's helpful. Again, never any issue with us actually getting to the point of doing that. It was a timing issue. On uh, I got you. Who, who owns Colonial Pipeline? Colonial o o Pipeline is owned by several entities. Including? including uh, uh, a division of Shell, Midstream, actually, Casa du Quebec, KKR, mm -hmm. IFM, and Coke Industries. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, I'm asking that because it's been reported that uh, over the last decade, Colonial has distributed, I'm looking at the article here from Bloomberg, Colonial has distributed almost all of your profits, sometimes more, actually, in the form of dividends to your investors. In 2018, for instance, Colonial Pipeline paid $670 million to its owners, which actually exceeded your net income for that year. I mean, that, that's a pretty good return. What, what do you invest in cybersecurity every year? It's a great question, Senator. We invest over $200 million over the last five years in our IT systems. It, and that's cybersecurity? That's that, what, how about on an annual basis for cybersecurity? $670 million distributed in dividends in 2018 alone, give me a sense of, you know, you're operating not, a, not unlike a public utility, right? I mean, we, just, right. we covered the fact you serve uh, 45, 50% of customers on the East Coast. You transport 100 million gallons a day. You shut down. Your, the attack on you led to 16,000 gas stations being shut down. So just give me a sense of, given the importance of your company, the size of it, the reliance what are you doing in terms of your investment for cybersecurity? I know you're paying your investors well. Yeah, Senator, great question. Uh, our dividend policy is not much different than any other midstream company. So I want to I state that first. Our, our owners in, have never denied us any opportunity to spend what we need to spend in order to keep the pipeline safe and secure. Which is about what a year? I, it, you know, take the average, over $200 million in the last five years. Okay, I'll tell you what. Over $1.5 billion in uh, system integrity every, every five years. Got it. 
Um, I tell you, we'll give you this as a question for the record so that we can get the actual, uh, I know you don't have the number right in front of you, but we'll give you the, the question for the record and you can give us the, the exact number on an annual basis. I think that would be interesting to know. You talk about federal regulations in your testimony and, and you said Congress should consider designating an official point of contact at a federal agency to better facilitate communication. It's an interesting idea. What, what rules do you think Congress ought to consider requiring of, of you and, and your company? I mean, so that's about your suggestions about what the federal government should do of itself. But, but given, again, your status, given the reliance on you, what, what do you think Congress ought to require of, of your company and companies like it going forward? Senator, great question. I, I think what Congress should require is that we have a focus on safety and security of this critical asset, and I think we've demonstrated that over the last 57 years of responsible ownership and, and operations. Let, let me ask you a little bit about uh, the attack in the IT system. So I, I understand that it, it, the attack occurred or was first detected only in the IT network, not in the OT network. Is that right? Do I, do I have that correct? Senator, that's correct. Okay. That's what the investigation shows up to this point. Got it. Okay. So uh, the, the, to your knowledge, the OT network, the operational technology network, would not have been compromised by the attack if you hadn't have shut down, the, you, did, you shut that down as a safe as a precaution, security measure. Senator, if there was 1% chance that that OT system was compromised, it was worth shutting the pipeline system down. Got it. I'm just trying to establish that to your knowledge, at this time, you, th you think it was concentrated in the IT system. Senator, based upon the investigation by me Got it. to this point, that would be a correct statement. Yeah. Okay. So here, this, this leads me to ask this. I mean, the pipeline is, is 70 years old, right? Roughly. There was a time, I assume, and you correct me if, if I'm wrong, but there's a time, I assume, where you operated the, the pipeline without today's computer systems. What I'm driving towards here is, do you have the capability to manually operate the pipeline in the event of, in the future, in the event of an IT attack like this one? And, and if you don't have that capability, should you, do you think, going forward? Senator, that's a great question. We actually did operate small portions of the pipeline manually in order to alleviate some of the fuel shortage. And the discussion took place uh, with the operations team about the ability to do that system-wide. And the response to that was it would be quicker to get back up on our feet by, by uh, correcting the corruption of the critical IT systems that we needed in order to get the pipeline system up than to operate it manually. But I think on a go-forward basis, there's no question that we will look at that capability. And it's a really interesting question because if you look at the aging workforce now, a lot of those people that did operate Colonial Pipeline and other infrastructure in America historically manually, they're retiring or they're gone. Fortunately, we still have that last bit of that generation, which allowed us to do what we did during this particular event. It's a great question. Yeah, very good. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Hawley. Senator Ossoff, you were recognized.